This video is sponsored by Squarespace, your one-stop shop for creating and managing your own online brand, but more about that later in the video. Hello everybody, glad you could make it. My name is Kaylee Allen and welcome to this week's video. This week I'd like to tell you all about my best-selling plants in the shop. Is this all of them? No, it's not. It's a small subset of them, but I thought I'd tell you a little bit about them. Now, some of them are relatively new, some of them have withstood the test of time, and some of them are more sellable because they've become more affordable. So there's kind of a mix in here. There's also a mix between variegated and non-variegated, so if any of that interests you, then keep on watching. The easiest thing to start with as a best-selling plant in this shop is this little guy. This is Anthurium waraquinum, also known as the Queen Anthurium. And you can probably kind of say why it's so good, right? This leaf here is a bit, a bit gangly, actually. It has another one on the way, I do believe. Or is it a flower? It might be a flower, I can't tell. Let me show you this one really up close. Can you see that there? Not quite sure what that is. It's looking more like a flower than a leaf, so that's really interesting. There's a bonus. But these plants sell so well, obviously, down to appearance, because it's certainly not down to their care, which I will get onto. They have these beautiful long leaves and just the most amazing contrast you've ever seen. They're also very velvety, and needless to say, they grow very long. This is from the top of my head, and it goes halfway down my torso if I step back. It's quite large. They can get really big and beautiful, and I think a lot of people have this plant on their wish list. The only reason why people tend to not buy these plants, to be quite honest with you, is the care. Now, I honestly think, this is just my opinion of course, but with Anthurium like this, and with certain other plants I guess that are more on the difficult side, you're either good at it or you're not, right? Because there's some plants that I own that I struggle with every day, and other people find them really easy. So for me, this is a plant that does okay with me. For a lot of people though, People struggle with this plant a lot. It's not the easiest at all. Normally when you buy them in, these beautiful leaves here are probably gonna take a hit. They may turn into Doritos, they'll go all crispy. These have the tiniest bit of crisp on the bottom, but it's not too bad. I would honestly argue that's in more than sellable condition really. But of course, if it got to one of my customers, you might expect a bit of damage. And that's if you get past the mechanical damage from the box, of course. Doesn't always happen, but these are the risks, right? They're just not the easiest. They require a lot of humidity. They can be grown in moss, this one is, or they can be in leca, or they can be in soil. They do have a variety of different, you know, preferences, you could say. But yeah, this is always going to be a bestseller, and it's actually held its value quite well. I've recommended this plant before as a really good investment plant, mainly because people aren't very good at taking care of them. Now, what do you mean? Well, stay with me, because if you happen to be good at these plants, you can buy them in looking pretty terrible either from a supplier or something, maybe a friend or a stranger on the internet. If you're very good at growing them, you could buy a really downtrodden plant, rehabilitate it and grow it out and make quite a bit of money off it. These guys have still held their value. They're very, very good. They're not, you know, in the mid treble digits, but they're certainly quite far up in the low treble digit range of plants. So really, really pretty plant. As you can see, pretty stunning. Not gonna lie. These are absolutely stunning. Oh my god. So that is Anthurium waraquinum, also known as the Queen Anthurium. My next best-selling plant is relatively new. I would honestly say that. This is a plant I've spoken about recently. Essentially, I hauled it on a video. It went wild. Everyone wanted it. It sold out everywhere. And the supplier put the price up tenfold for this plant. It was not cool. No one saw it coming. Not even me. I think all I have left are a few that I didn't sell that I've kept back to propagate. So I'm going to show you one that I haven't actually cut. But this guy here... He's still in his original packaging, actually. I just let him do his thing. This here is Philodendron squamicol, squamiferum. I can't remember exactly which one it is. I think it's squamicoli, blood or dark or whatever you want to call it. If I just show you this up to the camera, you will see this is a new leaf, so it's not quite as dark yet, but you will see just how dark these beautiful leaves go. It's not a regular green color. The back of them are absolutely blood red. Look at that. Really, really, really gorgeous plant. I wish this one would behave because it is all over the place. I don't know what's going to happen with these because, as I mentioned, the supplier has put the price up. So I guess everyone's just kind of waiting and seeing what happens because the price increase was, I'm pretty sure it's more than triple what it was originally. So a lot of us just have not bothered. So we will see, but this is a very good plant. What I can tell you about it in my brief time that I've had it is that it does grow 
grow very quickly. This one, as I say, I got this one in, I haven't chopped it, but it's starting to grow really, really beautifully. And they are climbers, if that wasn't obvious already. It's going to grow really, really nicely. It's a nice alternative to the philodendron serpents. Nearly forgot the name. If you don't quite like how hairy the serpents is, because honestly, the shape of the leaves, they're not that different. They're not that different. So if you think, oh, I like serpents, but it's a little bit hairy on the, on the petioles, this is a really beautiful alternative. There is a regular green version of this, which I don't think I can really pick up. I have a giant one sat down there, kind of off shot past this monstera here on the floor. Needless to say, the green one is just not as sexy as this one. This one is pretty darn nice. It's pretty darn dark as well. It's gorgeous. So here we have it. Philodendron, I believe it is. Philodendron squammy coal, blood or dark form or whatever you want to call it. Really nice plant. If you can get your hands on it, I suggest you do. It's probably a lot of profit to be made if you already own one because of the supply issue that we are having at the minute. So keep an eye out for them. If you're looking for an easy way to build and run your own website, then look no further than Squarespace. Squarespace is your one-stop shop to create your own website from the ground up using a selection of stylish and super customizable templates. It's so quick and easy to edit any one of these templates and make it your own. You can even have multiple websites under one account. For example, here is the website for my shop, but I also have a new one here that I created from a template. This way I can switch between whatever I'm working on really easily and I I can create and manage new websites so much more efficiently. If you want to create a really sleek looking website, either for yourself or perhaps you're setting up a web shop like mine, check out squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash Kaylee Ellen to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. That's it for voiceover, Kaylee. Back to the video. Up next, we have the absolutely incredible Philodendron Florida Beauty. Yep, that is him. Yep, that is how big he is. Would you like to see him? Look at the size of that. That is ridiculous. This plant has been around a long, 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 long time. And the weird thing is, it's just never really gone down in value. Yes, it's had a little bit of a dip, but really nothing of any significance. I've mentioned this plant before on a lot of investment videos, i.e., you know, which plants should you spend your money on if you want to make profit out of selling bits of them or whatever have you, or maybe you're a shop and you want to buy a plant and sell it on, whatever. They're always in these videos and they've never come down. They're normally either growing or stable. This one has remained stable even now. It's just such a good seller. I'm not exactly sure why. I don't know if it's down to the shape or what. Maybe it's the variegation. It's not full yellow. It is more of a creamy yellow when it comes off. A lot of people tend not to like yellow variegation. Most people prefer white. This is sort of in between. Give it enough light and it will look cream and not really yellow. So although it is probably technically yellow variegated, it kind of looks cream. I'm not really sure, quite honestly, what the hype is, unless it is literally the awesomeness that is this, but it is done so well. I always sell out of them whenever I put them up. People pay a reasonable amount for them. Never really any problems. I just don't have problems. I say this a lot, but when it comes to propagating them, please, 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 please don't cut the plant until you have aerial roots. You might have developed a method that allows you to get good results from not having aerial roots. But for me personally, I like to have aerials on these guys. That way I get minimal losses because they are not the best to root. They are really, really slow. That said, they're still good money makers. So one more time, just because I, I'm literally obsessed with this. This might have to be a thumbnail. Oh, he's just lovely, isn't he? So this is Philodendron Florida Beauty, and he is quite a pretty one, I'm not gonna lie. This one would be a bestseller in itself if it went up on the website. He's nice, is he not? He's very Instagrammable. Up next, we have none other than the Monstera Adansonii Verigata. And you're probably thinking, hang on a minute. This plant has come down in value a lot. Why are you saying it's a bestseller? And I'm being genuine. It is actually a bestseller in the shop. Why is it a bestseller? Because it's come down in value. Now these things are more affordable. If you are not aware, these things, maybe a plant of this size, at one point in time might have cost about $2,000. In the height of COVID, it might, this same plant might have cost $4,000. This plant now, low triple digits. Maybe I might sell it at 200, maybe something like that. Maybe a bit more than that. I'm not really sure. Just kind of depends. But because they are so accessible, they are selling really, really well. They just are. Not only that, but my Adansonia, funny enough, once it's tanked in value, I now seem to be able to grow it really well. Maybe because I've left it alone. I don't know, but it's growing better than it's ever grown in this shop. 
Really, really nice. This guy, I don't know why this guy never fully unfurled. It's quite sad, really. Cool thing about this plant that I think nearly everyone on planet Earth has noticed, the leaves keep half moons really well. What is a half moon? A half moon is essentially this here, where half the leaf is variegated, half the leaf is not, and it's in kind of a solid chunk. This is a great plant to keep that. Even if you chop it and you propagate it and you grow more, they tend to have a really good dispersion of variegation. Don't know why, must just be to do with the way that the nodes actually come out of the plant. I don't really know, but it grows so, so well and it is such a good seller. I always sell out of these very, very quickly, whether it's a one leaf cutting with hardly any variegation on it, or it's a plant like this, or it's somewhere in between. It literally does not matter. Not that this video is to really talk about investments, but I've mentioned it recently. These can be a good investment if you want to make not a ton of money off each round of propagation, because people are buying them a lot right now. You just won't get a ton of money for them, but they do grow quite quickly. So if you want to do that to make money from them, it's not the worst idea at all. And for a lot of people, I would say this was a very good low end accessible investment plant. See if I can bring him up to the camera because he's really cute. Look at that. So yeah, Monstera Adansonii variegata. Don't be sleeping on it if you think you either want it, you've wanted it for a long time, now's a really good time to get it and you can still make some cash off it as well. Bonus, right? So yeah, unexpected bestseller in the shop. Please excuse the condition of this next plant because it's been through a lot. It's been through transit damage in the case of the original leaf and it's been through heat waves and everything else. We've had a really bad heat wave in the UK and it, I'll be honest, a lot of my plants are kind of ravaged by it. So we don't have some great action. These are the newest leaves though and they're not looking so bad. They have been ravaged a little bit. But what is this beauty, you ask? This is the Syngonium Chiapensi Variegata. I do believe. So variegated chia pensi. Now, oh, this is such a good plant, I can't even tell you. I didn't expect to love this plant as much as I do, and I didn't expect it to sell as well as it does as well. If I can show you this leaf, even though it doesn't look its best, just so you get a sense of what this plant actually looks like. It's very non-Syngonium looking. When I think of Syngonium personally, I think of a lot of arrow shapes. This ain't it. This is a little bit philodendron-ish in its appearance. Not only that, but it grows really nicely. And I have to show you the variegation on these stems because it looks absolutely incredible. Can you see that there? Look how amazing the spread on that plant is. It is absolutely beautiful. Now these do sell for a lot of money. They are very in high demand at the moment. They're relatively new, so they've got a huge price tag. Everyone seems to want them. They do grow really well and they do look really nice. So I kind of get it, to be honest. I don't have many. I have basically this plant that I bought in and I have bits of it where I've cut from it. So even I don't have many, I could only get my hands on one. But whenever a cutting goes up for sale, it does seem to sell. And I think that's just a testament to how pretty the plant is. And to be honest, how easy the plant is to care for. Because I wouldn't say it was very difficult at all. Again, I've had some issues here, but I more put that down to the heat wave than anything else. Because I've cut from it more than once and it's still growing. It could be cut soon-ish. I'm probably going to let it grow a little bit more. But I could cut from it really soon and sell that if I wanted to. Or just take more and grow more propagations out and build up stock. So it's a really, really pretty plant. Is it really you know, affordable, accessible. No, it isn't. But bestsellers don't always have to be at the low end. Like, for example, the last plant, the variegated Ansonii, some of them are at the high end. I genuinely wanted to include a little bit of everything in this video. So that's him. He's very pretty. You get a close up shot of him just because he's so cute. There you go. Isn't he lovely? He's actually blowing the camera out because he's that variegated. How stunning is he? So this is Syngonium Chiapensi Variegata. Mwah! Beautiful, beautiful plant. Listen, listen, listen. I could not do this video without mentioning this plant because this plant is one of the most classic philodendron of all time. Someone always wants it. Someone always wants it. And I think even if they become even more affordable than they already are, people are still going to want it. This is one of these plants that's going to end up being a mainstream plant because if you can handle the care on them, and honestly, they're not too bad at all, you get a beautiful, beautiful effect. Check out this guy. This is actually one of my personal ones from the wall. A few of you might remember me repotting this a while ago. He's done pretty well. Well, I show you his old leaves. I pot him up. I fed him with my feed actually, and he has gone absolutely berserk. My feed, for some reason, loves philodendron specifically. Specifically Gloriosum, actually. I don't really know why. This guy is obviously a more round-shaped Gloriosum, by the way. You can get these in different shapes. You can get them with muted veins. You can get them with bright veins like this. You can get them in like a darker form. You can kind of get a lot of different styles of Gloriosum. So if it's a plant that you're looking for, shop around a little bit and sort of Google it online. Go down Instagram, look at different types because there are different types. Or, of course, you can 
collect the types if you really want because they are quite affordable. Depending on the size of plant, of course, they can be from mid to high double digits. So in the UK, that's £100 or less. And in the US, probably pretty similar. Again, size dependent. For example, this one is quite large, but even still, it wouldn't sell for a ton of money. That doesn't matter to me because this boy is gorgeous and ugh, I'm actually low-key obsessed with him. Don't think I have many round ones, but he is definitely one of them. I'm not even sure I knew he was round when I potted him up. He looks a little bit round, to be honest, doesn't he, with his old leaves? Obviously, there you can see some damage on the back where the plant has acclimated to the new substrate and everything else, but every leaf since then is looking real juicy, real healthy, and a big 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 size up if you can see the difference in the size of the leaves it's had the best 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 time best time i have a lot of these i you probably actually see me selling these over the next few weeks i'll probably do a sale on them to be honest because i have so many because they grow so well or at least they do in here for me they multiply quicker than i can get rid of them it's not even funny so you may catch them really really shortly on the website at some point as part of a sale so if you want one of these great chance to get one but even if you don't choose to do that there's probably a ton of sellers with these out again different forms different appearances they might not all look as sickening as this because the ones i sell don't even look as good as this to be honest this is absolutely amazing look at that oh that's a nice plant that is a nice plant so yeah philodendron gloriosum another one to maybe not sleep on not necessarily a good investment plant i'm not sure you'd get a great yield out of that but in terms of having it in your collection absolutely absolutely probably always will be a classic classic philodendron to have the last plant I'd like to show you today I'm going to have to stand back for because this is ridiculous. The leaves might even get my microphone. This is an example of why this plant is so good, to be honest. This is, if you can't tell, I will try and hold him up closer. This is Philodendron Burley Marks Variegata. Now, yes, this particular plant I'm holding is not a lot of variegata, and that's honestly because I left it to grow. They were a little bit more variegated near the bottom, I think. I don't know if you can actually see that there. It was doing better, but, I mean, it hasn't even been clipped at any point. It's just grown and grown and grown. The tops actually come back really variegated, and that's a good thing to learn about variegated plants. They look like they're going to revert, and then later down the line, they can just burst full of variegation. Because if you look at all of these, these are pretty minimal. But if I just gently support the plant while I tip it up, variegation on the top. So again, if you're getting sick of yours, maybe don't throw it or anything like that. It probably will come back. Just try and look in the stem and see what's going on with that. That's how you can tell. But if you can't already tell, they're pretty easy to grow. They are pretty easy to propagate. This one looks like it started out life as two plants, maybe stuck together, maybe not. I can't really tell by looking in this pot. Can't really show you either because it's very, very difficult but it looks as though it started out with two and it's become a bit of a tree. Now it doesn't have to be quite this unruly, but if you wanted to grow a gnarly bush and you want to not spend too much money on it, this might be the plant for you. I do hail this plant as being the number one beginner's rare or uncommon in our case plant because it grows so, so fast. It's it's not even funny. You can control variegation, it can revert, it can do whatever, but you can learn a lot about it throughout the process. And it multiplies like no tomorrow. I don't know if you can see how much it's kind of multiplied if I just hide behind the plant. It's it's a little bit insane, really, um, how much this plant just decides it's going to just go nuts. A lot of the aerial roots I've tucked down into the base to basically turn them into normal roots. It's beyond a joke, um, but if you buy one plant, I guarantee you'll get a lot out of it case and point. This was just left to grow. I'm not sure how long, maybe six months, maybe more, but it certainly wasn't bought in like this. This is a little bit ridiculous. Look how bushy that is. And I think for these reasons, the fact it is easy, the fact that you learn a lot, I do get a lot of people still purchasing them from the shop. And I do think it's people that want to experiment with variegation or want to experiment propagation or just generally looking after something a little bit more on the rare side or the uncommon side. That's probably where this plant fits in, I would say in terms of the market. Don't let that stop you if you want to buy it. They are great plants. And I say, I can just chop the top off that and start a really nice variegated plant. You don't have to keep them all green like I have. I've just done it out of laziness because quite honestly, I've got a lot of other plants to take care of. This one just took a back seat. Plus I'm quite happy to sell them this big, by the way. It doesn't bother me. I'll probably just sell this one as it is. I can't be bothered with it. So if you're looking for something to experiment with, this is a good plant. And it's still a bestseller. It's still a bestseller after all this time, which I genuinely find quite surprising. 
And there you have it. They are a small selection of some of my best sellers in the shop. Let me know which ones surprised you, which ones didn't. Let me know any of the things that you think are best sellers at the minute and what people should be maybe looking out for, whether that's because they've become cheaper or maybe they're new things on the market that everyone wants a piece of. It can be either, right? And I think this video is a really good reflection of that. Some things are variegated, some things aren't. Some things are brand new. Some things have been here forever. Some things are just so easy there can be so much to be learned from them. So it's a really, really nice little spread. I'm quite happy with that. But yeah, let me know what you think in the comments below. If you'd like to see any more of my content and you're new to this channel, I would love it if you could hit subscribe. I also have some socials. You can follow those. I'm on Twitter. I'm on Instagram mainly. I do have a Facebook as well. And that's it for this week video guys i will love you and leave you have a fantastic weekend and i will see you in the next one bye